About a year and a half ago, I remodeled our deck. And I salvaged any boards that I thought might be usable in the future, so that's left me with this. And I've used a few boards here and there on a couple of projects, but now my wife has requested an outdoor dining table. So here are the boards I've chosen out of my salvage pile. I want this table to be about eight feet long and the width of six boards. So those two longest boards there are 16 feet long, so I should be able to get two out of those one each out of the next two and then these are two by sixes that i will use to make the apron and i got a pretty cool idea about how to make the legs out of these pickets so let's get started cleaning these up Okay, so that's got the wood pretty clean, but of course very wet. So before I can start working it, I need to let it dry. So I've got it stacked up here so it can do so over the next two or three days. Here are the pieces that will be glued up to make a leg, except for one piece that I will put in after the table is assembled to add strength. Okay, so this is how the outside of the leg will look. So I want to go ahead and arrange these visually um, for the look that I want. And then I'll be able to mark which sides will be glue surfaces. Then we'll make a quick pass over the joiner to clean up these surfaces for good glue bonds.
Okay, so I've taken two leg sections out of the clamps. Um, they don't go together like this, they go together like this. So that will be a leg. And so we'll use a pattern like this to cut the curve on this section. So let's get to that. So if you see this nice even bead of squeeze out along your joint, that lets you know your glue coverage is consistent. All right, one down and three to go. So I went ahead and did a production run and cut the pieces for the remaining three legs right here. So all I have to do now is glue those up and you've seen that process so we can move ahead. So here's a little tip about doing a glue up like this. Don't cut your pieces to finish length before you glue them up. That way you don't have to fuss with trying to make sure the ends are all perfectly aligned during the glue up under clamp pressure. So I made these legs a half inch longer than my finished length. So then all I have to do is trim the ends and everything's perfectly even. So now, on to the top. Here are the pieces for the top. And I like to just go ahead and lay them out and just, just kind of look them over. And then I can measure and determine how much overhang I want to have on the ends and on the sides. And then determine the size for the apron. I wanted my apron to be four inches wide, so I ripped these two by sixes down to a four inch width. And then I decided I would miter these corners instead of doing a butt joint, so I trimmed the ends to a 45 degree angle. So here's a tip about doing miter corners when you're building a frame. Of course, your angle has to be accurate, but what some people may not think about is your parallel pieces have to be exactly the same length. And here's a quick and easy way to check that. Take your work pieces and put them back to back, long side to long side, like this, and then just fill the ends. And if one is longer than the other, you will immediately feel it. And if you try to pick them up like this, that's good. And if one is a little bit longer than the other, you'll actually end up picking up the long one. I want to cut a rabbit into the corners for these legs to kind of fit into and make that joint even stronger. But since this lumber is kind of rough, 
All of these legs are not exactly the same width across, so I decided I would go ahead and mark each leg to its corresponding corner before I cut that rabbit, and then I could cut it to the custom size of the leg. Well, I didn't think about something. When I remove that material from the corner, that changes the position of the legs. So now they don't fit. So I need to remark these and remove some more material and then they'll fit properly. I've placed the apron boards on the underside of the top boards I'm just going to use pocket screws to attach these top boards to the apron and this way I can go ahead and mark where I want to pre-drill the pocket holes in the apron boards before putting the frame together. I wanted a gentle arc along the underside of the apron. So I used this six foot metal rule clamped on a curve to scribe the line. And the same technique with a 24 inch ruler to mark the arc for the short pieces of the apron. It was easy enough to cut the arch into the short pieces of the apron on the bandsaw, but the long pieces would be a little unwieldy, so I'm going to do those with the jigsaw. So here's another quick shop tip for you. When you're cutting the edge off of a long board like this, and you're by yourself, you don't have anybody to hold the end up, clamps are your friends. So if you stop your cut and then come back with some clamps and clamp this board back together right here, in a couple of places, then when you get near the end of your cut, this end won't drop and break the wood up here, ruining your cut. So I'll use the board that I've just cut as a pattern for the second piece. I want all of my edges to be touch friendly, so I'm going to route a round over on the bottom of these apron pieces. I'm going to go ahead and glue and screw this apron frame together, but the real strength will come when it's attached to the legs. I just want to give these apron pieces a light sanding before I attach the top. Since I won't be edge joining the top boards to each other, 
I'm going to add this brace here in the middle for more support. Now I have the top boards positioned like I want them and I have the apron in place allowing for the overhang on the ends and the sides that I wanted and I'm ready to start attaching it. I'm going to use these finish nails in between the boards as spacers to allow for drainage. I'm going to start attaching here in the middle first. I wanted to break the edges on these areas here where I cut the curves and give it the same radius as the rest of the wood. And I'll just do that with the sander. on this thing. At the very beginning of this video when I was talking about constructing the legs, I mentioned there would be another piece that would be added after the legs were installed on the table. And that's this. A fourth one of these which fits right in here and seats directly against the apron which will transfer the load from here directly all the way to the ground which will make that very strong. So all I've got to do is mark it, cut it to length and glue it in place. One down, three to go. Okay, well that's got the legs all completed. Uh, there's just one more thing I want to do to them, and that is to route uh, a round over around the perimeter of the foot. And that will keep these edge fibers from splintering out, especially if the table is ever kind of scooted around. Okay, one last thing before I say the construction is complete, and that is to trim just a smidgen off of each end to even all the boards out. What I really like about this wood is this deeply textured weathering that it has. But you can see the pressure washing raised some fibers and left sort of a fuzzy appearance to the surface. And we're gonna fix that with this. <laughs> does is remove some of this softer wood that's kind of decayed which just enhances the texture that much more I'm really pleased with the way it turned out so I want to do one more thing I want to sand it just lightly a little bit just to make sure there are no splinters and just to make sure it feels good to the hand I want to break these edges right here with the sander just to make them touch friendly and then we can call it done
Now let's do it. there it is and thankfully it has passed my wife's inspection she's very pleased with it and looking forward to putting it to use if you like this video be sure and give it a thumbs up and if you enjoy this type of content consider subscribing the chairs the what the chairs tell them about the chairs oh yeah good idea my wife found these metal outdoor chairs to use here with the table and they're really neat but that's going to be another video so stay tuned. Get away from my microphone, B. Get away, B. Go, go, go. Get away from my table. Stop it. Well, there it is. And. Uh.